What is up and welcome back to the Talking Nutrition Podcast. Today we're going to continue our mini-series called The Lessons from the Himalayas where I just, first of all, I just like reflecting on that trip because it was one of the more special trips I'd done. Um, and second, a lot of good kind of like mindset lessons came from that. So we're going to keep these short. Uh, the article that's related to this podcast is up on our website so you can check it out if you like reading as well. Um, but we're going to work through this. So basically what this is going to be is... Um, our second part where we're going to talk a little bit about discomfort and really just dealing with it because as you may know already right we we can expect discomfort it's not if it's it's when we can expect setbacks and i feel like we've been talking about that a lot recently but this is really like one of those where sometimes you're going to be hit with right it's it's that it's like a mind game and you're being put to the test it's like hey will you be able to keep going when, you know, shit hits the film, basically. When things get a little bit more difficult. Like, let's be honest, it will be. Like, who who told you this this health and fitness thing was going to be easy? And we already know it's not, but, you know. So in part two, we're going to talk about mindset games or mind games, really, and how to deal with discomfort, really just taking it one step at a time. So these are purposely kept short because I want you to, to really reflect on this and think about, like, what... Like how this applies to your life and where you are currently at. Obviously, we're going to keep it nice and general, but I really want you to think about that. Like where where does this apply to me? Um, am I currently being put to the test? Hey, is it maybe going super well? Okay, let me at least expect things at some point to get a little bit more difficult. And when it will be more difficult, what will you do, right? Think about those kind of things. I think that's even even more of a, a good one to to explore a little bit more before we get into this. If you are currently on a roll and you're like, hey, you know what? I'm I'm currently fine. I'm doing I'm doing well. I'm losing the weight. I'm building the muscle. Whatever it is. Okay, cool. Know that this too shall pass. <laughs> and it's always a bit of a bummer to bring this up with clients, but I t- always tell them like, hey, right now you're on a roll. I don't want you to turn this into something negative, but I do want you to think, hey, when I'm not doing as great anymore when things do become more difficult, when I'm not motivated, what will you do? Because if you are in a role, you are now in a good headspace to come up with a plan. I like to call that an if-then plan, right? Come up with a plan to allow for, right, things to to show up because you're going to be able to work through it anyway. And you're going to keep going. Even if it's a quick reminder to yourself. You could even write things down. I do that sometimes. So on your journey, there will be multiple times where your character will be put to the test. This is where most people will give up at the slightest side of discomfort, right? Yet what they don't know is that the ability to deal with the discomfort is one essential for your long-term success. Like there's no way around it. There's no quick fixes, no hacks. You will have to get uncomfortable if you want to grow. And two, it's trainable like a muscle. So today I'll share a brief story about a moment where I felt like I couldn't keep do, keep going anymore. I really felt like I was I had no energy anymore. I physically I was just drained. But I did keep going one step at a time, literally. Because you're going to be put to the test, right? But here's the thing: you're you're physically and mentally way more able and you're more capable than you really think. But the only way to to really believe that, because I can tell you on this podcast, right? And you can, once again, we talked about this last time, is like you can share the quick quote on social media, right? You're more capable. Yeah, cool. But <laughs> you have to prove it to yourself before you actually believe it, right? That's the hard part with these kind of things. It's like, I can share my story. I can share some takeaways. I can tell you like, hey, you are capable. You are physically and mentally capable way more than you think, but you're going to have to prove it to yourself for you to actually believe it. And that's why I want you to take action after reading this short you know, article or listening to this podcast. Because reading, listening, whatever it is, or watching, if you're watching on YouTube, that's one thing. But what are you going to do about it? That's my question for you. Now, real quick before we jump in, we are um, still you know, offering free consultations. So if you're listening to these podcasts and you've been with us for a little while, right? You've been listen to talk and nutrition you're following me on instagram and you're like hey you know what i'm i'm kind of good to kind of take action on this remember that we do offer 
30 minute free consultation calls on the house. Why do I do that? Right? Why do I give away my free time? You know, well, not free time, but you got what I mean. Why do I give my time away for free? I should say it's because I want to help you and I want to talk goals. I want to help you move forward because I know that this whole health and fitness thing can become very difficult. If you need the accountability, if you need the guidance, I can help you. I'd love to coach you or our team will. You're very likely going to work with Alexander who's on our team. But either way, even if you don't decide, right? Or maybe I decide like, hey, you know what? Like, I don't think it's a good fit. Because let me say this. We don't just allow everyone into a program because you're going to have to be a real action taker. And I, I don't say this as a salesy, pushy, whatever thing. Like, no, like if, if you're ready to show up, we want to work with you. But if you're kind of like, ah, you know, you're, you're someone who doesn't take action, someone who always thinks that they need to be motivated, someone who is not willing to get uncomfortable and not willing to grow, right? If you're someone who doesn't make a decision, right? Who doesn't just say yes or no, like now it's, it's always in between. If that's you, then sorry, then we're not going to coach together, right? And that's okay. Maybe you can get to that point. But that's why we do these calls. First of all, I want you to share your story. I want to see, hey, how can we help you? If we can help you. If that means coaching, amazing. If it means not coaching, that's also cool. Because not everyone is ready. And I understand that. But either way, because you're a listener to our podcast, I'd love to offer you that 30-minute free call on the house. Non-binding, right? You don't have to make any decisions before we get on the phone. And then it's either yes or no. And either way is cool. I'm here to help. Let's get into part two of our mini series, Lessons from the Himalayas. I'll drop that link in the the show notes, by the way. Let me scroll down real quick. I do have a couple notes. So this was on the Mount Everest base camp track. Lobuche village, uh, elevation of 4,940 meters. That is over 16,000 feet. I believe this was one or two. I think it was two days before we got to Mount Everest base camp. And um, this is where I got introduced to what I now know was like altitude sickness, or at least the onset of altitude sickness, um, because I made it to a base camp and everything, and it was fine. But like, I definitely felt really shitty. So I remember because there was a glacier, a really long glacier that we had to cross, which was kind of sketchy, but we had to cross the glacier. And then the rest of the path was like alongside of it, really long, it was really cool which is funny too, because here I was like feeling like absolute shit in, in some of the most incredible kind of sceneries I've ever seen, you know? So from that specific spot, I don't have a lot of photos at all, but okay. So that very last bit off the track, I really began to notice um, the symptoms, right? It's feeling really sick, dehydrated, dizzy, weak. You know what? I probably was dehydrated. I remember it was very hot that day. Um, and just exhausted beyond imagination. So there I was like walking alongside this long glacier with my eyes closed, you know, like I I was actually trying to keep my eyes shut just like, I don't know, like I felt like it saved me energy for some weird reason. Like it felt better. It helped with the headache, whatever it was. I, you know, I felt like shit. I would of course open my eyes every now and then to kind of see like where it was going, but it was just a long straight path, you know, and it was just one step after the next. You know, those like old school, like the tube man thingies, like the inflatables <laughs> in front of uh, like a car dealership. I felt like those, but then like without any air going through, just completely just empty, like deflated. Like that's, that's how I felt, right? I really felt I had no energy, like no energy whatsoever. And by no means was this one of my strongest moments. I'm going to admit that, right? I felt like shit. I definitely was a big baby. Like I was tired, thirsty you know no energy you know um like i said you're like your character gets tested you know it was really tough i'd done a lot of hiking but i had never done like a lot of like high altitude you know stuff and it's hard because there's no oxygen in the air or you know not none but very little so it was tough you know but i knew that the only way that i could actually make it was just to keep going take a one step at a time and that my mind was in control and there was there were two things at that time that luckily taught me that lesson so this is actually even before the trip i will say one uh swimming in the norwegian uh, fjords because i live in norway right i i often do you know uh, i don't like to call it like ice bath <laughs> because it's so hypey but like i'll jump in the fjord basically you know um, I haven't done it in a while, I will say that. 
but jumping in cold water, swimming in the fjords is always great. And at the time also, I was doing CrossFit. So this is one thing I, I will say as much as I'm currently not doing it myself, but because I, I made it through certain just grueling CrossFit workouts, 45 minute, right? AMRAPs where you just keep going and you just chip away and you're always working and you're, it's, it's a mind game more than anything, which is why I do like sometimes really testing yourself, right? But I'm not going to say that the high intensity stuff is always great for everyone because there, there are some cases, like if we're dealing with like adrenal stuff or maybe gut issues, like sometimes we're going to have to pull like high intensity training um, or at least, you know, do it much less. Same kind of thing goes for running and stuff. But okay, just generally speaking, I think it's good to push yourself, you know? Again, like I said, like you're way more capable of dealing with discomfort than you think. You can push your body so much further. And that's that's two things, like the, the, the cold water swimming, right? In the fjords here and then CrossFit, like taught me that because I went through physical discomfort, but you can tell, right, your body by controlling your mind that it is in control. Your mind, I mean. But like I said in the beginning, like I can tell you this, but... Again, you're going to have to do something with this because if you don't prove this to yourself, you're not going to really believe it. You're going to listen to this podcast and you're going to be like, yeah, that's cool. You know, kind of motivating, but um, let's get on with my day. <laughs> Makes sense. Now, eventually we got to Lobuche, which it was a um, tiny, tiny little, I couldn't even call it a village. I think it was three buildings, maybe. It was a group of yak like outside there's a few tents it was like this glacier where i could fill up my water which is kind of cool um but like my my head felt like it was going to explode you know but you know like we were there so i was stoked we, we made it and it was finally time to rest and my room was like a like a two square meter wooden box almost where like i would open a little door and then it was like right away it was like the platform where i was sleeping on which was just wood and I had my sleeping bag with me, but like that was the only thing really. But you know, like it didn't matter. I could finally lie down. I could finally recharge. And it's really fascinating sometimes to to push yourself so far, just accepting a situation for what it is and just dealing with it, right? And I'm, of course, I'm speaking in the sense of like a physical challenge here, but it's also going to be in, in times where you're met with self-doubt or maybe just... Right, your your own thoughts take over. Whether it's a certain emotion, emotions, or um, you know, sadness, stress, anxiety, angriness, you know, like just being like not not being in a spot where you want to be, and uh, being in a situation where hey, maybe you're dealt, you know, the wrong cards for the day, or you know, you're working on your business and it's not going like whatever it may be. Maybe you worked really hard for a test and you filled your test, whatever. We're going to be about with the setbacks. We're going to have to deal with it. And you know what? Like, all it takes is really just that one step and then the next and then the next. So that's what I always start, try to think of. And I was actually, as I was walking there, I remember like, hey, I've done these kind of long, crazy workouts where I was 45 minutes just chipping away. Like I said, I've done the, the ice baths, the, you know, the cold water dips where Right, physically, you're like, ah, oh, this is super uncomfortable. I, I really don't want to do this, but you do it anyway. And your mind's in control, right? But it's stuff that you've heard before. I know that this is stuff that you've heard before. If you listen to a fitness podcast, you know this kind of stuff, right? You know this stuff. You've heard it before, but did you actually do something with it? Did you actually apply something like that in your real life? What are you going to do when a difficult situation comes up? Because will you give up the second thing is kind of don't feel like the the walk in the park right or will you accept the situation and deal with it take it one step at a time and just handle the situation i'm always fascinated by by people and i do understand guys don't get me wrong either right i'm not judging here if it wasn't for my personal 30 kilo fat loss journey i wouldn't be here talking to you if it wasn't for me being hit with those setbacks right I wouldn't have that passion. I wouldn't feel like the responsibility to share all this stuff with you. That's why we do the podcast. That's why I write content. That's why we do the newsletter, the blogs. It's my responsibility to share this stuff with you because I've been there. I've done that, right? I used to feel like shit. I used to be overweight. I used to be completely confused. And you know what? Like during that 30 kilo weight loss journey, there were ups and downs, you know? It wasn't just like smooth sailing. Like it wasn't. 
So I'm not judging when I say this. But when you have a goal and you've been mistreating your body for years, let's just call it what it is. I'm not judging, like I said, but we're not eating healthy. We're not exercising. We're not getting our steps in. We're sleeping like shit. We're drinking too much, too much processed foods. And the list goes on. We don't take care of our mental health, right? If that's been the case for many, many years and we tell ourselves that it's something that we absolutely want to fix, that's something that's so important to us that we would do everything in our power to reach that goal. And then the second it gets a little bit more difficult, when we're not motivated, we give up. What type of shit is that? You know what I mean? You can't allow yourself to to do that. You got to keep going. You can't allow yourself to do that. Like I said, I'm not judging here because I've had those feelings. I've been in those spots. But understand that it will not be difficult. Sorry, it will be difficult. That it will not be comfortable. It will not be. It will not be easy. That's why so many people struggle with this stuff. Because they can't lose the weight and keep it off and right eat healthy while also being flexible. Or keep going simply when there is a setback. I'm recording this on, on February 23rd. We're almost two months into the new year. You said that you were going to reach this goal in 2024, right? Allowing yourself 12 months. So why did you give up two months in already? And there's, right? There's a possibility that you're listening to this and you're like, oh shit, that's me. And hey, by the way, if this is not you, good for you. If you're still in there, hanging in there, doing the work, Great. Keep at it. But if that is you, I want you to answer that question for yourself. I know it's a challenging question, but we're also here to grow. And I'm here to grow with you. I'm here to help you. That's what this podcast is for. So the, the true lesson here, right? Kind of going back to challenging yourself and getting uncomfortable. There's a philosopher called Seneca. As you know already, I'm, I'm very much into Stoicism and it's, it's done a lot of good for, for me personally over the last couple of years. Last two years, I've been diving into it more and more and I like sometimes bringing up these kind of quotes because just because of like how much it's done for me. So it goes, we treat the body rigorously so it will not be disobedient to the mind. And it's, it's a really cool quote. I think it's fascinating too that, what is it, like more than 2,000 years right? Later, compared to like when this was written, it's still applicable. Because you're going to have to handle the situations and push through to prove yourself that you have to sometimes purposely get uncomfortable so that you can actually show yourself. So do the hard workouts, go for that run, even if you hate running, crank the cold shower, do the ice bath, do do whatever it is that challenges you. Push yourself a little. Do, I don't know, do a diet, yeah, do a fat loss phase and show yourself that you can stick to it. Do a muscle gain phase, show yourself that you can train hard and that you can stick long enough with it and that you can right, keep yourself from overeating so that it doesn't turn into a dirty bulk. Show yourself that you can practice self-control, you know? Whatever it is that you have a hard time with, do it. I'll give you a couple examples here, public speaking for me. If it wasn't, for a few people pushing me back in 2021, I wouldn't even be here talking to you. Because I would grab my phone and start talking into my phone. It was uh, literally like the worst shit ever. It was so awkward. As if I look back to my like oldest reels, I like guess it's, it's so cringy. But that's okay. We grow. And then a year later, we started this podcast, you know, Christine and I. And you know what? In the beginning, it was also a little awkward. And we both kind of had to find our way. And, you know, we were not able to to fully kind of like stick to a certain structure and it was all over the place and we go on rants and you know it was a great time and we're still having a great time i'm gonna make sure that christine comes back soon by the way as a guest but like you start somewhere and you think oh shit this is weird it's uncomfortable and i can tell you this like when i hit record it's still a little right it gets to me i would i would have never expected to be doing a podcast but i'm doing it because I know i got to share this stuff with you. I want to share this stuff with you. But if it wasn't for me actually just showing myself that, hey, I can step into that uncomfortable situation and talk about this stuff and share it with you. Or if it wasn't for me 
with the actual public speaking, like going to gyms, going around, emailing people like, hey, you know, doing nutrition seminars. Well, when I was a kid at school, I could not do any present, like the presentations, right? I was, I would shiver, stutter, sweat, right? Just all right, super, super nervous. I'm doing that shit now, like quite frequently, I would say, you know, more than what it has been at least, you know, so it's more and more. And guess what? You get into that uncomfortable situation, but you deal with it. And then usually you'll find out like, hey, it's actually not that bad anyway. But guess what? You grow. And then that next time your tolerance is, is, is up here and your tolerance keeps growing. That goes for physical, goes for mental. I want you to push yourself a little, right? I want you to show yourself where that limit is. I feel like sometimes we're too careful here, too careful of pushing ourselves too hard and right, thinking that we're going to burn out. What if we can find that limit and we can kind of stretch that a little, like a rubber band, right? Can we stretch that a little? Push yourselves. That's the goal here. So show yourself that you can do hard things without giving up. It's a muscle that you can train that becomes stronger over time. And it doesn't mean that discomfort will become less. It just means that you're going to be able to deal with it better. And that's my last point here. It's usually still going to feel uncomfortable, or at least a little bit, maybe less over time, kind of depending on what it is. But you're going to be better at dealing with it. So the real question is, like, are you willing to get uncomfortable? I'll leave you with that. I'll be back with a bonus episode on Thursday. But think about this stuff, right? Think about this stuff. Think, like, what can I do to kind of push myself? What can I do now to, yeah, do something that typically I try to avoid and then go do that thing? I'll talk to you on Thursday.